Okay. Okay, welcome to SoCalWaterWars.substack.com. Uh, and this is uh, Fire and Rain, what I hope will be a regular video interview or streaming uh, chat session with uh, various water experts. Uh, today I have as my guest, uh, Connor Everts, who is a facilitator of, for the Environmental Water Caucus, Executive Director of the Southern California Watershed Alliance, and co-chair of the Desal Response Group. He is also chair of public officials for water and environmental reform, or POWER, as well as uh, he sits on the board of other organizations, including Amigos de los Rios. He co-chairs and moderates the Southern California Water Dialogue <clears throat> and Green LA Water Committee. And there's a lot more here. He has served as a uh, water board director. He's been at uh, all ends of the uh, water buffalo spectrum here, I guess, and the activist uh, spectrum. And I've known him for uh, about uh, 20 years now, I think. Uh, go back a long way there. So he, we're going to talk today about the so-called Water Infrastructure Funding Act, which will be, if it gets enough signatures, will be on the 2022 ballot in November. And uh, the, uh, uh, the ostensibly, this is a response to uh, the current drought uh, in which uh, now we have, uh, we're, we've been getting just about 5% of our normal supply uh, here in Southern California from the State Water Project. That will probably go to uh, zero in what, uh, January or February, right, Connor? Um, actually, usually a little bit later. They look out the, uh, in Sacramento, they look out the window and see the level of the Sacramento River and make that decision usually in March or April. Okay, all right, so uh, by spring anyways, yeah. unless uh, the uh, rain situation greatly improves. Um, so, uh, Hence, we have the Water uh, Infrastructure uh, Funding uh, Act, Infrastructure Act, um, ostensibly to provide long neglected uh, in the views of those who are backing it and overdue funding for badly needed uh, water projects. There's also a philosophical backdrop to this, uh, one of sort of a free marketing view of uh, water uh, uh, projects versus conservationists and the uh, philosophy of conserving water. And this initiative seems to, to uh, be actually an attack on conservation, which we'll get into a little bit here. Uh, it was set aside 2% of the general fund, the state's general fund every year. Uh, so that'll be an estimated uh, uh, by the attorney general's office to be about two and a half million to a uh, billion rather to four billion a year uh, until five million acre feet of new water is provided by a project selected by a water commission, uh, supposedly because they are drought resilient. And this could go on for decades and uh, take up to about $100 billion of the taxpayers money directly from the general fund, taken away from other projects, social projects and so on, education and so on. So the, the kind of projects that this would, uh, would uh, supply uh, funding for would be uh, mostly projects such as uh, dams, uh, desal plants, and other kinds of water storage facilities, recycling. Uh, and uh, this would be the funding, uh, those who would get the funding, the projects that would get the funding would be decided upon by the State Water Commission. And that commission would be able to and this initiative would allow for, first, first of all, it rewrites the constitution, it rewrites the state constitution, part of article 10 of the state constitution. It would give the uh, commission the authority to, uh, or would streamline the, uh, the uh, regulatory process and uh, the clean uh, uh, CEQA the, uh, and, and, and uh, also the Coastal Act. And uh, we'll get into that in just a moment. And uh, so who is uh, behind this? So let me bring that up just a second here, just briefly here. So some of the people behind this are, are people who don't believe in conservation at all. For example, uh, Sean Duane, the uh, vice president of the Mesa Water District and founder of Reopen OC Now, which was an anti-vax or anti-masking uh, uh, kind of, uh, uh, group that came up during the uh, pandemic. Steve Sheldon, who is the president of the Orange County Water District uh, and uh, a former uh, 
consultant for one of the projects that might get, or one of the companies that has a project that might get to some of this funding, uh, Poseidon Resources or Poseidon Water, what, and who wants to build a uh, 1.4 billion desal plant in Huntington Beach, <clears throat> Edward Ring, uh, Jeffrey Vanden Wavel, uh, representing uh, dairy uh, uh, farmers, and uh, Wayne Western Jr., who's general manager of Hammonds Ranch and Corporate. So uh, agriculture and developers are represented heavily uh, 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 on this uh, in this effort here. So. Um, Connor, are you there? I see. I guess. Are you there? Connor? Yes, I'm I'm here, John. And I'm okay, here. sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Great. Sumar era, are you here? And can you hear me? Yes, um, I, I, I I I hear you. I don't see you, but I hear you. Okay, that's fine. So I want I want to note here one of the go ahead. Can you see me now? Yes, I see you now. Yeah. Okay, all right. So uh, one of the uh, one thing I want to note off the bat here is that uh, the five million acre feet addition, uh, the addition of five million acre feet of water a year, uh, is exactly what uh, studies have shown conservation uh, could uh, much more cheaply add. Uh, it wouldn't cost a hundred billion dollars uh, to add. Uh, that uh, supply, if we uh, did a lot more uh, conservation in urban areas and especially in uh, agriculture in, in the state. So uh, I wanna concentrate uh, today, there's so many uh, things to talk about with this initiative, but uh, one of the most striking things to me is how it uh, pretty much uh, it seems to kind of eviscerate environmental regulations, including CEQA, and the Coastal Act. And I wonder if you could uh, give a little background on what the, for a typical large project, let's say like the Poseidon project in Huntington Beach, uh, that's been in the works for about 20 years here. What is the, uh, oh, and also proposition one, the proponents of this proposition, uh, the Water Init uh, Infrastructure Act are complaining and very unhappy because they say that uh, the, seven or so billion dollars that was approved in funding uh, for by the uh, proposition one in 2014 has not been spent uh, and and projects are being stalled and so forth but so can you give us an overview of what what's the purpose of the regulatory process the purpose of CEQA uh, what that is exactly and the coastal act and then we'll use uh, the Poseidon project as an example of what might happen um, sure, John. Um, thank you for this opportunity. I want to say that uh, the initiative by its backers are called More Water Now. Um, it's an illusion that there would be more water available. And um, I think you're right. The origin of this is their frustration that the Prop 1, which had $2.7 billion out of $7.14 billion on a voter approved initiative, would go directly to uh, storage. And they thought that meant new dams. Although in reality, we're not looking at new dams. We're looking at old dams like Temperance Flat um, on the Tuolumne above another dam um, and a, a dam called Sites, which is off site of the Sacramento River where they pump the water over mountains, let it sit in hot, windy, evaporative area with uh, mercury in the soil, uh, which would create another set of problems. Um, these are the reasons we have regulations. This is the reason we have environmental review processes, both the state CEQA, which requires a review of projects. Um, and it's been and around. CEQA, CEQA stands for uh, California, California Environmental Water Quality Act. Yeah. Um, that um, reviews large projects um, in a variety of ways. They can be um, projects that are for new development, they can be projects like a, um, a dam, a desal plant. Um, the other part of this that they're interested in is what they call conveyance, um, which has been called the, uh, everything from the peripheral canal when it was voted down in 82. The latest iteration of it, which I think is about the seventh, is called the um, Delta Conveyance Project, 
but it's essentially a canal to move water away from the estuary in the Bay Area um, and inland where the Sacramento and San Joaquin come in. Um, it also would be used to uh, take um, canals that currently are aqueducts that currently move water and put state money into it instead of the original federal loans, which were supposed to be paid back by what they say is the beneficiary. So whether it's uh, the giant ag uh, evil empire Westlands or the Friant water users, um, they want others to pay for their projects rather than it was agreed upon originally the beneficiary pays. That includes Met and a good example of that's Orville. So getting back to our environmental review, um, this audaciously, this uh, project makes it look like the only reason they haven't got more water has nothing to do with climate change, the changes in the snowpack and the changes in the time and the availability of rain and going to flood like we had in Northern California in October to unusually dry times when it should be raining like in December and January. They're ignoring all those facts that this isn't about drought, which is temporary and it ends, but about climate change, which is constant. And other sources of water for Southern California in particular that have been impacted are the Colorado River. So somehow they think if they steal enough money out of the general fund and for other projects, um, that they will be able to magically create more water by putting a slab of concrete across a position. We already have 14 dams in the state. We're taking down dams that are filled with silt and don't make sense. To build new ones at this point makes absolutely no sense. Um, to there, add really more any, there really isn't any place to build a new dam, is, is there? I mean, uh... so the temperance flat one that I mentioned that comes out of um, the backside of Mammoth Mountain and the Minaret Mountains um, flows over 400 foot Rainbow Falls as it starts as a you know a small stream um, becomes the San Joaquin River that is so diverted um, that it is it runs dry essentially or underground through portions because there's already so many dams on it and so many diversions. Um, my mentor Carla Bard, who was once head of the State Water Resource Control Board, call it the colon of California. So somehow we're going to take more water out of an already over allocated system and, and somehow magically create it. Um, we'll talk more specifically about Poseidon and ocean desalination, but uh, just that portion of this has um, people up in arms who have worked in good faith on CEQA um, challenges for the environmental impact reports. And, and quite frankly, even when you challenge the reports, the best you get is another review of the environmental impact report. But in that you get, a, you should be getting an open discussion um, if they listen to the comments. It's not just brought by the developer who pays for the EIR, um, but, but by the lead agency, a public agency um, that is putting it forward and members of the public community, tribes, and others who all have a stake in this. So um, eliminating that is a huge backward step um, that shouldn't be done by a single initiative in an election year. That's not how we legislate um, or regulate uh, in this state. And it would be an undoing of years of agreement and work. Um, the other this, part this limits the... Uh... Uh, it, it's, it's so called it supposedly streamlines the process, which means uh, that uh, for, the, for the project timeline that, that you would normally have for review. And there's a yeah. reason for that timeline. And some good examples are what happens in the time from the submittal of the EIR to the certification, which is when the lead agency approves it, um, and then the challenges that come afterwards. And sometimes oh, really? we see projects that are approved. Let me just finish. Okay, you know, sure, sorry. Are approved. Um, and then major changes or information happens afterwards, or there isn't the demand for water that they originally thought there was, which is happening across the state. Um, and then you have an EIR that's essentially outdated and uh, no longer relevant. And that's what we've seen what's happened with um, Poseidon's project in Orange County, because I met 
you, John, working on this about 21 years ago, right. and we're still having the same discussions. The same with the two big dams that I mentioned, Temperance Flat and Sites. They've both been around for about 40 years, and they're high cost, low yield projects without enough local funding. And the reason they didn't get funding under Prop 1 is the Water Commission did its job and reviewed them with a set of criteria, and they didn't pass the, that criteria. Some groundwater projects, some raising of a dam, Los Sequeiros, some others did, but, the, but they didn't. So this is essentially sour grapes wanting to undo that. And then the final decision on projects like the Coastal Commission, which could overturn, be overturned by this obscure person that not, you know, people who aren't know about it is the Secretary of Resources appointed by the governor, currently Wade Crowfoot. And this so will be even, without any public okay. hearings, and just be a, a like a dictatorial right. uh, decision. Right. A unilateral decision by a single political appointee, which they think would go in their favor to undo sometimes decades of process and decisions that had been made previously. And there's not a single agency really that does this. You know, we, we know from working on these issues, there's multiple agencies that are part of a regulatory process. It wants to eliminate the consistency between state and federal regulators. For instance, you have um, the Corps of Engineers who's dredging pyramids. That's a, the 404 process is often part of any big project. Um, the Coastal Commission demands that there's consistency between federal and state. This will attempt to eliminate that as well. Um, so this is a mass change that most people won't know when they're approached by you know, signature takers who are probably getting $5 a signature along with a whole bunch of other clipboards for things. And they'll just say, sign this. It means we'll have more water, um, even in times of drought. And people will say, oh, that sounds good without knowing more about it. Um, they need almost a million signatures um, by March to um, then file with the Secretary of State, and then they need final language for the ballot, whether they get that or not. And most people within the water industry, even those that we call uh, water buffaloes that have been around forever, um, don't think that it has much chance of passing. But some agencies like MoDoc, where uh, one of the proponents is the pre um, president and the other was formerly on that board. Um, has already signed on in support. Uh, from MODOC or you mean OC, uh, Orange County Water District? I, you can edit this one, OC, the Orange County Water District, which does a good job of um, blending sanitation water, treating it multiple times, having it filtered through the ground and treating it again in their groundwater replenishment group. Um, they then have been approached to do the desal when no one else was interested in buying it. Um, so I think it's really kind of a conflict of interest for what's supposed to be an objective um, board uh, that hasn't made a decision, a final decision on desalination to be promoting this fantasy uh, more water now initiative. Okay, so this, this uh, act, if it were to pass, uh, whatever the chances might actually be, would it, it rewrite the California constitution uh, part of Article 10, which uh, speaks uh, to, to the, uh, or, or which, uh, out of which comes the so-called reasonable use doctrine. And, uh, and, and then the, that relates to the issue of the need for projects and so on. So uh, that's supposed to be part of the, the decision-making process by all state regulatory agencies, right? Correct. And okay, so- and, and two other important pieces I think will be ignored. And one's, one's called the public trust doctrine. Right. And, and the other is the environmental justice impacts that are now required under the human right to water. But as far as the beneficial use, um, that also includes a piece that there wouldn't be any waste, um, unre what's called unreasonable use and waste. So. Are we putting in these huge projects just so we can perpetuate uh, overdevelopment and waste of water because we still haven't reached the levels of efficiency? And I don't think conservation as a word really describes 
the levels of efficiency and demand side management that we're working on. Um, but until we reach those, why are we even talking about the zombie boondoggle supply side projects? This act would, and this act would specifically prohibit uh, considering beneficial use. Which, which is unbelievable, and I'm not sure in any way constitutional, but because we live in the 20s and anything seems possible, um, you know, in, in, this, in this era, um, we have to inform people as much as possible so they understand what's really in front of them and um, prevent this from moving forward. In using the, Poseidon, the proposed Poseidon project, a $1.4 billion project, and, and the, the uh, company uh, Poseidon Water has already uh, made attempts to get, uh, or, or will be making attempts to get uh, about $400 million in funding from the, through the Met and uh, other funding through other uh, agencies, including that, that normally would fund housing projects and so on for uh, affordable housing and could uh, certainly uh, be, uh, would certainly be a, a, a candidate for getting funding under this act. And uh, so I want to, uh, to uh, play you uh, a, a clip, a short clip from uh, a, the October 6th meeting of the Orange County Water District in which they uh, considered uh, an, uh, endorsing the water initiative, the uh, more water initiative. And uh, two, they voted eight to two, two directors, uh, Roger Yo and Kelly, uh, Roger Yo and Kelly Rowe, uh, Rowe and Yo, <laughs> voted against it. Uh, but uh, the rest were all for it, uh, unquestionably so. So um, I asked, uh, well, doesn't this, uh, can you speak, I asked them to speak to uh, the general manager, Mike Marcus, uh, and uh, to speak to uh, the issue of uh, uh, eviscerating uh, environmental regulations and, uh, you know, specifically going uh, past the, uh, <clears throat> or, or around the, uh, Coastal Commission, all that work that's been done by the Coastal Commission for decades now would just be thrown out uh, under this, uh, if uh, this uh, project were approved uh, unilaterally by the National Resources uh, Secretary, or Natural Resources Secretary. So I asked them to speak to that and uh, let's uh, hear what they had to say. I, I, uh, the response was given to me by uh, Mike Marcus, the general manager, uh, and uh, by uh, the president of the board, uh, Stephen uh, Sheldon. Let's, uh, let me, uh, first of all, put on the, uh, make sure I'm doing this right here. Give me a second here while I turn on the share function here. Okay, okay share screen, okay, here we go. And, okay. And here it goes. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. President. I, I just wanted to uh, address the comment that, that was made previous, previously during public comment. Uh, this initiative does not eliminate the CEQA process. What it does is it streamlines the CEQA process. Uh, and, and also as far as bypassing the Coastal Commission, uh, it does not bypass the Coastal Commission uh, there again, there is a time frame by which the Coastal Commission would have to act on projects, and then the approval would actually be from the Secretary of Natural Water Resources. So I just wanted to make those statements. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Any other comments on the from director? Any questions from directors? So let me add a few um, thoughts as well. And if, if, I, if anyone else has a question, please certainly. Um, let me know. I'm just making sure that I let everyone have a chance here. Um, on uh, as um, as Mike said, the streamlining is no different than what is currently being provided to say affordable housing. They also have a sequel streamlining. So it's not that there isn't any environmental review. It's really about not having these item these projects slow down the courts. And enables them to get in front of the judges and the court of appeal as quickly as possible. That's my understanding of the majority of the streamlining of CEQA. And, and we certainly go through a vigorous environmental process and environmental review. Okay. <laughs> so 
There you go on that. And um, so you're, you're, go ahead and respond. Sure. Get your, sure. Get your gut reaction here. Uh, um, I think that's classic water agency double speak. Um, I think that misrepresents exactly what the, it does. Um, first, um, it overrules a decision by the commissioners at the Coastal Commission and appeals it instead of the Secretary of Interior, no, I'm sorry, Secretary of Commerce, where it can currently be appealed to, rarely is, but could be, um, it goes to a political appointee. Um, that, that's that part and ignores all of the effort and work that has been put in to reviewing and staff time and state money. Um, you know, there's so many ironies in this, it's, it gets ridiculous because this project hasn't been delayed because of the courts. Um, this project hasn't been delayed by the great efforts of community people and environmentalists and Native Americans environmental justice people. It's been delayed by the proponents beside themselves. Uh, most recently, they refuse to uh, pay their filing fee. Um, you know, and they're now owned, we're, we're talking about a company with an ironic name, you know, the Poseidon Adventure, where a ship sinks. Um, this is a company that is now owned by Brookfield from Canada, which is a huge development company that has bought up other companies like Poseidon to be able to move its work forward. Um, also, this is in no way, you know, there's a benefit to affordable housing. Real affordable housing is needed um, and needed in some places more than others, um, but there needs to be a process for that and there is. But to say that it's the same as that is not an equivalent at all. <laughs> well, that, the affordable housing still goes through, it, 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 it's, it's not equivalent at all because it's just all all the uh, the recent rules changes that have done is say that in inline development, which means it's in in the middle of a city or something, can be uh, classified as ministerial, which means it doesn't have to go through CEQA anyways, but it still has to be approved by right. the city. There's still, there's still processes, like I said, that affordable yeah. housing. Right. Goes. Recent legislation promotes infill. Um, uh, and splitting lots in residential areas, how in that how that will work is not entirely clear. So just like this initiative, there's um, kind of broad statements, but how it would work in the real world is not clear. But there's still, Poseidon's trying to take money away from affordable housing um, through a state process, um, SIDLAC, uh, just has had hearings recently, and um, they were able to do it in 2008 for their Boondoggle project because of cost in San Diego, uh, Carlsbad, San Diego County. They're trying to do it again now. They're asking for more money than the actual project is worth. Um, they just got excoriated through... Uh, Steve Lopez, who writes a column in the LA Times, rarely about environmental issues, but this one couldn't be ignored. And I think that um, this is just an example of their response to being required to do real regulation um, that is needed by the public before you build a project like this. And what do you think is going to, what do you think is going to happen? I mean, this, this, the whole, the bedrock of, of regulation and, and projects and so on is supposed to be in, in the, the Article 10 there of the state constitution and the, the reasonable use doctrine, which ha has a balanced approach uh, and, and, and uh, it requires uh, it not to be wasteful, it should be needed, it, it should be, you know, not, and, and so on. And this just seems to, I mean, this is a huge conflict within the constitution now itself. The, the, the actual Article 10 that this, Act would rewrite would have conflicting parts in it. So it is. But before we would make those kind of wholesale changes and choices, essentially pushed by private companies and developers over what the public and the legislature has and courts have deliberated over for you know the life of the state. 
um, there should be a much bigger discussion. And the only streamlining they're doing is trying to ignore the laws that are on the books that make sense. And to almost prove our point and disprove theirs, things have changed since they made these original proposal. Um, just on cost, the original Poseidon project was $267 million and $705 an acre foot, acre foot being roughly a third of a million gallons. And the current proposal, as you mentioned, is 1.4 billion with a B. And um, the water price now in Carlsbad in the next year is gonna reach just about $3,000 a year. Right. So if that isn't a bait and switch, I don't know what is. And I would think that there's parts of this initiative that are a bait and switch too, in terms of what they're selling in terms of what the impact would have. And I, I can't ignore the fact that there are still almost a million people without, without access to clean, safe, and affordable water in the state while we're promoting projects that would benefit development along the coast. Oh, and there's some money to recycling, but there's already money in the federal government from the Bureau of Reclamation for recycling. Metropolitan Water District, who we call MET, is also putting money up with the County of Los Angeles to build a huge recycling plant, which could be available for Orange County at a lower price and more consistent. And these projects that we're talking about are not, and this is a term of art in the water world, reliable. Dams aren't reliable because, especially with climate change, the amount of rainfall and snowpack we have is not reliable. Uh, the ocean would seem reliable, except when we have red tides, oil spills and other things, and these plants would get shut down and they get shut down mechanically for other reasons as well. So if we wanna talk about reliable water, we invest in local untapped water resources, including the ones we're beginning to invest in and in, in stormwater, real high levels of recycled, recycling and reuse done on site and in industry, gray water, both on industrial, commercial, and home water level, um, and levels of conservation that other places in the world, like Israel, Spain, and Australia did before they looked at ocean desalination. Now, finally, because I, I know I told you this would be uh, 15 minutes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so um, the, um, uh, oh, well, you, I, you know, I forgot what I was going to say, so I'm, I'm going to edit it right there. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that'll be it. Okay. All right, uh, Connor, uh, thank you uh, very much. Yeah, for... You try to edit it. If you want to redo it, I'm rethinking it. Yeah, yeah. I'll, it's hard I'll, to do 15 minutes. I, I, oh, I was going to say, I was going to say that the, okay, maybe I can, I can chop this out. And, and the irony of this whole thing is that uh, right now, in this very severe drought uh, that I think we all agree we, we have, we also have in Southern California more water stored up than ever before. And the San, San Diego County Water Authority down in my area here says that they have enough water, even with the continued drought such as it is, until uh, uh, it's uh, 2040 or 2045. Right. So uh, that's that's uh, kind of strange. It does show, and, and, and the water usage per capita and in general has been going down uh, for decades as population continues to increase. So there's, right. you know. Those, uh, those, are all, those are all excellent points and show that this initiative is really more of a fantasy for people's personal and private gain and, and not for the general public's benefit where we should be investing in first things first. Right. Uh, thank you very much, Connor Everts. And, uh, and uh, we'll uh, be talking more about this uh, in the future, I hope. See you later. All right, John, good luck, bye. <laughs>